almost nearly finished. We would like to welcome you all to Chewing the Fat with the Cap. We'll have special guests each week. But for now, tune in, get your coffee ready, and let's have an hour's worth of fun with special guest Matthew Langford. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Let's go live. Oh shit, we're live. Hey guys, how are we all going? Welcome to Chewing the Fat with the Cat. Obviously, uh, the intros have gone in. I have to apologise for that little bit of nudity there. Uh, I didn't realise we are going live quite so quickly. Uh, as uh, this is the first show, I do apologise for uh, any of la the lag. We've had a uh, few internet issues here and um, uh, my young son's been helping me out trying to get an uh, internet cord run under a house that I couldn't fit under. So thanks, Harry, for all your help. He also, um, wrong side. Did the, did the sign for me, chewing the fat. And, uh, yeah, look, what can I say? Uh, coronavirus, coronavirus, stay at home. You have to stay at home. We need everyone to stay at home. This is why I've set this up. Let's get on here and chat, have a bit of a talk about fishing. My special guest tonight is very close spe very close friend, Matthew Langford. So um, I've got a little bit of fun in store for probably the first 20 minutes and uh, then we'll go out and open a heap of questions up and do a bit of reviews and whatnot. This will be a Monday night time slot at 9 o'clock just so I've got good internet. Um, look, we're really looking forward to it. Just remember rules and regs for the live stream. Uh, just treat everyone with decency. Don't get on the chat site and start slagging people off. It's all about having fun. It's all about learning. And it doesn't matter if it's bait fishing, lure fishing. Obviously, the guest I've got tonight is a tournament fisherman and a bit of a gun. So we can ask him all those uh, hard questions. I will ask the hard hitting questions as well. So uh, Matthew's a bit scared sitting in the background. I can actually see the video feed of Matthew and I can see the fear on his face. So that's all good. So we will do some draws. We've got some prizes to give away. I've got some uh, 360 GT search baits. Uh, I've got some jig heads. Uh, we've got a full box. The Mercury box is full of stubby cooler shirts, hats and stuff like that. So we'll try and give away some prizes for good questions. Yes, Ricky Doyle, I maybe scared everyone off if I did that. So... Um, Jump on, say hi, put your comments up. Try and leave the the questions till later on in the um, in the feed because we've got a fair bit of video content to go over to start with. So I will introduce Matthew and then um, get him to talk about himself a little bit. First things first. People are already sending me messages. Let's go. All right. So let's bring Matthew into the feed. Get this the right way around. We want to make Matthew bigger. He's better looking than me. There we go. G'day, Matty. Oh, I've got to unmute you. There you go. There's me first. As uh, sound engineer and everything in the one go. Are you on the line there, Matty? <laughs> yeah, can you hear me all right? Yes, I can hear you. I can hear you. As I said, the hard-hitting questions are coming your way. I know you've been a little bit scared of this. Uh, so... Um, I hope you enjoyed the intro. It was, uh, it was, it was a bit well planned, that one. So I was rolling on the floor. <laughs> I literally fell off my chair and rolled on the floor. That was hilarious. Excellent, excellent. As I said, we want to have a little bit of fun. So, um, Maddie, I want to talk about the South Burnett. Obviously, um, you know, your, your class is a bit of a superstar up there in the South Burnett. I was up there for a long time and uh, watched your – transition into the pro that you are. But I wanted to talk about the South Burnett for a little while because, you know, there are there are a few guns up in the South Burnett region and um, I've been able to compile a list. I've been on, done some research online and uh, I'll just refer to my notes. Now, um, how many famous sports people do you reckon are from the South Burnett area there, Matthew? 
how many famous. Yeah, yeah, famous, like yourself. Uh, a dozen. A dozen. Well, I'm gonna li- I'm gonna list a few uh, famous people from the South of Burnett. Not all sports people, but I think you're up in that echelon. So um, we'll start with the NRL. Everyone knows Gavin Cooper. Gavin Cooper's from Mergen. So there's there's one on the list. Uh, number two, uh, rugby union player Beric Barnes as well from Cherbourg. We've got um, in politics Sir Joe. You know, uh, from the Mergen region, um, people of my ilk or my era will remember watching State of Origin, watching this fella run around, Steve Renouf. Oh yeah, yeah, he's from the uh, he's from the South Burnett region. A singer, songwriter, Australian legend from the South Burnett region. Might have had a bit of a tooth problem. Chad Morgan is uh, from up in the South Burnett region <laughs> as well. Uh, I bet yeah, you right. didn't know that one. No, we got two. Cricket stars played for Australia. One bowler, Carl Rackerman. One opening batsman, Matthew Hayden, both from the South Burnett area. Um, the NRL again, Willie Tonga. We've got uh, Holly Furling in women's cricket as well. And also beach volleyball, Talakwa Casey. Where do you reckon you sit in that list there, Matthew? <laughs> I don't know. I, <clears throat> I don't know. Is, is a fisherman classified as sports people, are they? Or? Of course we are. Look at my bill. <laughs> okay, okay. That's a pretty good list. I didn't know Chad Morgan was from here, though. Yeah, yeah. So it was a, it was a very good um, compiled list. Took me a long time, a whole one Wikipedia search, and I come up with all of those. So I don't even know if they're all true, but I'm pretty sure they are. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, mate, as I said, uh, long-time friend. Um, I've been with you on the journey. We've had a lot of fun over the times. But, you know, really uh, sometimes I find myself defending you in a way where, you know, a lot of people out there say that you've got a bit of a free ride being related to Carl Jacobson. I know that this is not the truth. You're a very, very hardworking individual. There's a lot of stuff you do behind the scenes for all your sponsors and everything else. And we've got um, we've got a few videos and, and whatnot to play you here. Um, I know the audio at your end is a, is a little bit out, but um, I was able to contact a few people over the last week and close friends of yours and um, there's some sponsors as well. Um, okay. So, um, listen, I'm, I'm just going to... Um, I'm going to hide myself off the screen and I'm going to uh, just play the first one. Hi, guys. I've been asked to say something about Maddie Langford. Mum always said, if you can't say anything nice, don't say anything at all. See you. Nah, really. Uh, Maddie, uh, from a sponsor's point of view, is a uh, is a dream. He's uh, taken a leaf out of his uh, cousin's book, and um, he presents himself very well, and also gives back to the fishing community. So, Maddie, you're a legend, mate. So everyone knows uh, lovely man Glenn Casey, and was uh, happy enough to uh, send me a video uh, this week to. Um, have a few words about you. Now, I've got a few to go through because I put the call out behind your back and nobody really knew. And, uh, yeah, I, I sort of got swamped and I, I really had to um, trim a few of these out, Matty. And to tell you the truth, the next two um, were were really hard to um, to get. Um, but, yeah, I, I, I couldn't resist on taking this little bit of an opportunity to try and embarrass you just that little bit, mate. So um, here's, here's the next one for you. So, can you, you... The thing I love most about Matthew is always been very thoughtful of other people. And the thing I hated in the past was when he was still at home, he would come home at all hours of the night, get in the shower and shower <laughs> and shower and shower until I knocked on the door to oh. tell him to get out. So there you go. Your lovely mum decided to get on to uh, send me a message. How cool is that? <laughs> Bet you didn't know she could do that. My mum never ceases to amaze me. Yeah, well, here's one that'll even blow you away even more. 
<laughs> oh, oh my god. The thing I like about Matthew the this most is, is the way he treats his mother. And that of course follows on with the rest <laughs> of the family. But the thing I hate about him the most, he turned out a better fisherman than me. So Mr. Langford Senior, there you go. I bet you didn't know they could do uh, online videos. <laughs> Pretty cool, eh? That's unreal. <clears throat> I've got to admit, there's a little tiny bit of lag, so I'm a little bit behind this. But I'm, as you're putting them up, I'm about a few seconds behind. <laughs> now you now you can understand why I've got such a big head. <laughs> no, that's all right, mate. I'll, uh, there's a few more to go through, so I'll just whack this uh, next one into the stream here and let's see what your lovely wife has to say about oh, you. Oh, my God, really? <laughs> Matthew Langford, my oh, husband. Uh, one of the biggest things I love about my husband <laughs> is the time he gives to other blokes and other anglers um, and to friends um, and to be an ear um, to listen <laughs> and spend the time to have a chat. Oh. Um, he really does oh, care about um, mental health <laughs> and um, we'll give them the time um, to listen and to talk. Um, and I really cherish He's good that. good looking, isn't he? Something I don't love uh, about Matt uh, is the amount of time he spends <laughs> in the toilet and then um, doesn't seem to clean it afterwards. There is such a thing as a toilet brush, honey. Please use it. Love you. There you go. I know you've got a little bit of lag, but Nettie's picking on your uh, time in the toilet and uh, that you don't need the dunny brush. <laughs> oh, my thinking time. <laughs> yes, yes. So, so I quite often bring Matthew and he is on the loose, so I have to admit with um, with Nettie on that one. And um, I've just got a comment I see there, Lloyd. Yeah, this is kind of this is your life. The first few minutes I thought I'd just, uh, just spend roasting Matty a little bit and having a bit of fun with him. Um, so while I'm chatting, I'm just looking for the next um, next video to play. Um, are you surprised at all, Matty, at uh, the comments that have been made? Well, <clears throat> I wouldn't be surprised, no. No. <laughs> what, about, what about this guy? Do you know this guy? Oh, here we go. <clears throat> Yeah, Matt and I met about 20 years ago um, out in St George. Uh, we <laughs> hit it off straight away. You know, we've been best mates ever I'm since. Lag, I'm lag. Um, as young fellas, like um, we spent most of our time hunting and fishing. But fishing was very different for us back then. It was all hand lines. <laughs> oh um, shit! You know, just yabbies <laughs> and worms, catching yellow belly mainly some G fish. <laughs> uh, no fancy boats or rods or lures or any of that kind of thing. Matty's always been good at fishing. Um, it used to frustrate me no end. We always used to, you know, if we went somewhere, we'd always have a friendly little comp, you know, we'd start the day, Where comps on, and Holy then it was, you moly. know, either bobbing like mad or twigging like crazy. And, and he used to always beat me. But oh, I remember one man. night, it's the only time I think I ever beat him at a fishing comp. I had to wait till he went to bed, passed out. And then I went and sat at his lines in his special spot. That's Sam. And I raked in about two big boxes of yellow belly, so... I got one back on him, but yeah, he had to not be there for me to do it. Um, as far as Matthew goes, you know, I've seen him grow up in that this last 20 years, and I'm just so proud of what he's oh, achieved God. already. And when I he's only going to get better and be better and go from strength to strength, you know. So, um, yeah, very moment. proud of him as, as well. I'm sure his family and, and all his friends and family are very proud of what he's done. <laughs> there you go. So, uh, was able to contact Sam during the week as well. I have got a couple more. I'm trying to float through this because other people might not. You know, all the guys that know you from the tournament scene know know you and everything else. We're hoping to put this feed out so, you know, everyone can get on and learn a little bit about you there, Matty. Um, so um, <laughs> I uh, didn't take much to get this guy to, um, to say a kind word about you either. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Corey's asked me to do 30 seconds on uh, Matthew Langford. Um, I've known Matty for about five, six years now after starting the Bass Nations. Um, he's a triple threat. He's um, a great bloke. He's um, unreal at fishing. He's <laughs> the best of the best. And he's good in bed. He's, um, 
you cannot ask more for Matty. He, he'll give out any information <laughs> that anyone's asking for. Um, oh. He's very hard to fault. He's annoying like that. Um, yeah, I just can't thank him enough for the support he's given me over the last uh, five years doing what I do. And um, yeah, he's made a massive difference in how I've fished and the things I've learnt. So um, yeah, take my hat off to you, Matty, <laughs> top bloke, and uh, thanks for everything. <laughs> So that was Michael Paddy O'Dowd, one of the gentlemen of the sport. Um, as I said, got a couple of sponsors for you. Yeah, copy that, Paddy. <laughs> uh, got a couple of sponsors for you as well. Uh, this is one of your um, your sponsors and uh, good mate of both of us. Uh, he actually sent two videos through, so I've got two from this gentleman. His name is Mick Johnson. Bit of the uh, bull rider here for you, Matty. <laughs> so that was the nice words. Now, um, he, he also had this to say. Also, another thing that most people may not know about oh. Matt is he has a rooftop camper on top of his Ken Mills Toyota Hilux that he drives around in now. Most people don't realise that oh Matt can get a little bit lazy in the middle of the night when it comes to relieving himself. So if you're ever walking around the uh, Ken Mills Toyota Hilux and the rooftop camper is up <laughs> in the middle of the night, don't walk close to it. Oh. Whatever you do. He has been known oh. to roll over and unzip the zip and let her rip <laughs> from the top deck. You know I mean. Love you, Matt. All the best. So there's the mad bull rider, Matty. Um, <laughs> he decided to um, to chip in as well. Um, and then um, we, we had a bit of a promo video this week from um, one, of, one of our close friends as well. And... Um, <laughs> Oh, no. Let, let's, see what, uh, let's see what he had to say. Oh, no. Hey, guys. I've been asked to uh, comment on my uh, experiences with Matthew <laughs> Langford. I first met him at, I think it was BP Dam, through one of the Oz Tackle fish comps, uh, <laughs> through another really good friend of mine, Corey Goldie. Yep. And from then on, I think we hopped in the car and drove to New South Wales some weeks later. <laughs> um, from then on, it's... Just oh, been God. fantastic. So that was uh, that was Tim's kind comments, um, but he did have this to say as well. <laughs> Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to past events of fishing with Matthew Langford. Very splendid indeed. His character is fine. <laughs> His morals may be a little bit loose, but, well, we all can't be perfect like me. Yes, fishing with Matthew Langford. <laughs> Splendid indeed. <laughs> Here we go, Matty. I've oh, really? roasted you enough, I think, tonight. Um, everyone wanted to jump on board and, and have a few words to say. I know you've uh, you've got a few internet issues at your end and the volume wasn't quite good, but when you watch back tomorrow, um, you'll actually hear everything that everyone said. All kind words, but, you know, I couldn't let you get away. You know me, I've got to keep the level and I couldn't let you get away with it too much. Um, the comments are coming up and, um, yeah, there, there's been quite good ones and we've got some on the side that uh, we will try and get back to later. Uh, Shane Clark's uh, put one up there that uh, will be a great topic to cover. We have got a little bit of agenda to um, – yeah, never a dull moment with Tim Tynow. Thanks, George. Um, <laughs> yeah, we, we're going to try and put some um, 
uh, try and stick to an agenda. We're here for as long as we need to be. Maddie's opening himself up. We can uh, we can stay on as long as we want. We do have a, a little bit, a few questions to cover ourselves that uh, we've had via Facebook and, and messages and whatnot. So we've put them into a little bit of agenda, but I will try and get to some questions. I'll try and grab um, Shane Clark's question first. So I'll see if I can bring that up on the screen. So James asked, Maddie, what are your thoughts about the dams being closed? Uh, I think that the dam closures, I had a look tonight. Um, Sackwater closed uh somerset and, and basically all their dams earlier in the week and then i had a look tonight um and sun water have actually closed all theirs now as well as of as of today um i, I totally I, honestly i totally agree with it um i know there's some people that are fishing and whatever else and they're doing it on their own and i, and I really don't see a huge issue with that as long as they're not coming in contact with other people. I think the biggest thing is <clears throat> just worrying about those people that are going to service stations and fueling up and um, being in contact with a lot of other people that could be a, a potential risk to people. But I guess the simple question now is the dams are closed and we've just got to abide by those rules and, and move forward and just wait until they open again, I guess. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I totally agree. Uh, it, it's quite strange down here. Um in Victoria, they've closed all the waterways. Maritime are actually fining people for being on the water. Um, they've got um, all these rules in place. Yet, the little grey area in there, that if you live on the water, you can walk straight down the front of your house and still fish. Now, yeah. I, I've got a, a staff member here at work that she lives on the water and, and whatnot. We talked about it today where, you know, we just need to all do our little part and just stay at home because... We all want the footy back. We all want, you know, the tournament scene back. We all want them back. And the, the more we stay at home and the, and the quicker we stay at home, I think the better it is that if we don't go out, we'll get back on the water a lot quicker. So um, thanks for your question there, Shane Clark. I will um, keep an eye out on the news feed as we go on. Yeah, we've got another one here. Oh, look, this is from a bit of a local... Uh, legend up in um, around the the Gatton area, I, I believe it is. Uh, Nikki um, has come on board and fished a few comps. So um, I'm, a, I'm a passionate bass angler. How much knowledge and experience do you think is required to co-angler in farm fishing? Great question, Nikki. Um, let's have, you know, Matt's a guest, so let's have him first go. I know, I know Nick. I know Nikki. Um, fairly well so the answer to that is less less knowledge than you have got Nikki um, realistically you don't have to have any knowledge or much knowledge to to come and fish uh, in the tournaments I mean I, I remember when I started I I'd, ha I'd done a little bit of bass fishing um, and then basically just <clears throat> jumped in and um, did my first season as a co-anger in the Bass Nation series <clears throat> and I think, yeah, I think as long as you've got a basic knowledge of fishing, you can cast. Um, <clears throat> but I think the biggest thing is the willingness to learn. Um, I know a lot of young fellas, and, and, and I, I think it's fantastic that, you know, everyone wants to jump in there and do really well. But as a co-angler, you should kind of go, you should go into it and just really want to learn. Like, learn everything you can. And that doesn't matter what it is from back in a boat down uh, down the ramp to driving a boat on for a pro to, you know, watching them cast, um, you know, the types of lures that they use at particular times of the day. Um, just there's so much to, to learn just by watching a pro fish and being at the back of the boat as a co-angler, you've got, you're in the, you're in a front row seat of watching how a pro fishes. Um, in my experience, I, I learned so much more being a co-angler than I ever did at any stage in my fishing career because um, just just watching different guys. And I was still – I could nearly name all the things I learned from different guys. I, I learned tons and tons and tons of really good stuff, and I also went with guys that I learned what not to do as well. Um, 
So I kind of learned, learned from their mistakes in a way as well. So, yeah, you don't need to answer your question. You don't need to know a whole lot. You don't have to have a whole lot of experience, but just go into it with an open mind and a willingness to learn. That's that's what I would say. Yeah, look, I totally agree with that, Matty. And, Nikki, you're ready. Just go and do it. Um, you know, you're, you're better than most of the, the guys that I've fished with. So, um, you know, just, just jump on board and do it. I think there's a whole fear factor. We all got involved in that fear factor and, and whatnot. Matty's won a, a co-boat uh, AOY with the Bass Nation, and I can tell you it wasn't through a luck of the draw. He had, um, now I don't want to sound disrespectful, but really good pros, and then he had um, not so runs like myself taking him around and he was catching fish on the back of the boat. Um, you know, I won two Queensland titles in the team's event only because I had Matty on the boat. So, um, you team, know, it's, it's all... Um, it's all fun, and um, yeah, let's um, let's just keep the questions coming in. We've got our own questions that we'll go through. Oh yeah, I've got another question, another good question here. So I'll whack this up. Um, I'm happy to stay on the on the questions as they come in, and we'll go back to the feed as we need to. So. Um, Do you think we might see open type competitions fishing on your own rather than with a partner or co angler? I, I think there's, <clears throat> I think there's room for it. Yeah, um, I, I personally, I personally don't care what sort of scenario or how would you say, um, what sort of, uh, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? I, I don't mind the the. Whatever the, oh, what's it, what is the word I'm looking for here? Um, I don't know what's, I don't mind the different scenarios or the different types of competitions that you're fishing. Yeah. They're all, they're all different. So I'd like the shared weight, um, the way the Bass Nation run and the way ABT used to run um, with the individual two fish limits, um, pro and co angler divisions. I really like that. Um, so they have their advantages and I think they have their disadvantages, but I agree um, in saying that there, I think there is more room for open competitions and I think there's also more room for uh, high high entry fee level comps, um, so high risk, high reward comps, if you want to put it that way. Yeah. Um, yeah. So more, more, more open um, scenario comps, yeah, whereas just a, a single boater. And, you know, I'm fully open for, you know, ba you know very basic uh, low-entry comps to, to really high-end expensive comps. Yes, um, yeah. I, I'm open. I'm definitely open to it. And I don't I, – I actually don't think there's enough. Um, I think there should be a few more options for us and hopefully, you know, hopefully something comes about in the, in the near future that, uh, you know, especially after this – coronavirus sort of thing happens that there is more options for us but at this point in time there is amateur comps and there's pro comps and there is also a couple of open comps but yeah i definitely think there's more room yeah definitely i've loved the um the abt oz open format in the in the bass over the last couple of years and it is different it's, it's totally different going out there and and fishing by yourself, netting your own fish and everything else. But I still do like uh, teams events and I still do like, you know, the formats where you get billeted to the co-boater on the boat. You get to meet more people as well. So I, I like that social side of things just as much as I like fishing. So great question there, Rick. Um, let's go on. We've got another good question here, then I'll skip a few. Um up. Now, you have to bear with me because I don't have a, um, a webcam uh, and I've actually got my laptop sitting on the other side of the room, so it's very hard to, to read the feed. Um, hey, Matt, have you ever fished places other than Big Bass Dams? I fished the Maclay River and think it's better than dam fishing. That's from, I think it's Kalisa Craig. <clears throat> yeah. I honestly, you know, in my honest answer to this is I would 100% prefer to fish rivers than dams every day of the week purely because I grew up fishing the Boulogne River 
um, out of St George in southwest Queensland. But <clears throat> the the Richmond River uh, tournaments we do in northern New South Wales, the Clarence River, um, <clears throat> you know those those river rounds are my favourite purely because one you can fish structures, so you're not so much fishing open water. The bass might be a bit smaller, but there are some there's some big bass in those dams. Uh, I mean, there's bass, big bass in those rivers, just like our dam. Um, but yeah, the other thing is too, you can you can find a patch of river a hundred kilometres away from the start line and basically not see another boat. Whereas in our dam, sometimes you might see, you know, thirty boats where you're sitting. So um, yeah, I totally, I, I totally agree. I would much rather fish rivers than dams, um, and yeah, even even down south, the Murray River, Lake, Lake Mawala, um, that Corey's taken me to, the Gamby Lakes, that sort of stuff. That's that's my kind of fishing because it's natural structure, you know, your open rivers and that sort of stuff. So, would you agree with me there, Cap? Too, you reckon? Oh, definitely. I love the rivers and and you know that um, even to the extent where you scoot around the big bass boats and and whatnot, uh, it just feels a little bit more. Uh, enclosed and gives you a little bit more of a hype when you when you get to the spot. Um, I know some of the the babies and their tinnies don't like us flying around, but it's not every weekend that we do that. So, no, I really enjoy the river rounds definitely. Now, um, as I said, I, I can't read the screen very well. Kalisa Craig, that was a great question, and uh, I want to give you a prize for that one. So, if you can contact me through the Corey's Dam fishing page with your address. I'll send you a prize. Uh, we've got some plastics and some 360 um, search baits for you. Um, please send it through. Um, I'll leave it up to you to contact me because I will forget. And, um, yeah, just contact me through the page and I will uh, send that prize through to you. Thank you for that question. Right. Um, we've got a couple more questions. Uh, a couple more people have jumped on, but yeah, I want to go into, um, I suppose, um, the agenda a little bit, and we'll uh, we'll cover a few questions in the agenda here, Maddie. I think. So just as we do, I know you've got a little bit of lag there. Um, Maddie was kind enough to share. Me. He didn't know about all the other videos at the start, so he was kind enough to share me some videos, and. Um, Know, as I said, Matty started off um, working his way up from a co-boater, won a, won a title as a co-boater. He went on to win Rookie of the Year and then went on to win an AOI Championship with Bass Nation. He's always had this dream, and I only know this because I'm friends with him, to fish AFC. Um, he, like all of us, watched the videos as a kid and... Um, you know, decided that that's what he wanted to do. He set his goals for it, and he actually, uh, he actually made it. And we actually have a little bit of a, a couple of videos here. Um, uh, Maddie and Mitch Cohn in action, I believe. This one. <laughs> <laughs> You bastards. <laughs> that's a good teammate, right there, sharing, sharing with Jackie. I licked all the flavour off. <laughs> <laughs> so team Jack links there, Matty. You and uh, Mitch last year, you went up there for your first attempt at it. And, um, yeah, basically um, it didn't go to plan last year. I know this year's already been filmed and you can't let anything out of the bag. Um, I'll just play this second promo video here. Um, you lose one. Well, it was sitting on the bottom and something <laughs> grabbed it and ate it and took off. Oh, while well, you're weighing. Well, it was doing <coughs> weighing. Oh. <laughs> I didn't wet myself, so that's good. There you go. There's, there's two pros at the top of their game and still able to have a little bit of fun out in the boat. Don't think that tournament fishing is all about just, you know, just fishing. We have some real fun in the boat, don't we, Matty? We do. Can you yeah. tell us a little bit about AFC? Tell us about the experience with AFC. Um, first, first, I suppose I'll talk about Coney first. Coney's very much like yourself. So 
<clears throat> he's real good fun. Um, easy to get along with, easy to fish with, but also serious at the same time when we need to be. Um, and obviously very skilled fisherman as well. So um, <clears throat> uh, the AFC experience, it's a little bit different to what it used to be, but um, basically they still you pitch up against really, really good anglers of different, maybe different species, like there's some barra anglers and brim anglers and, and that sort of thing. But um, they basically are putting you against super skilled anglers in a in a bit of an unfamiliar scenario being up in in the Mackay region fishing for sooties so me and Mitchell last year were kind of thrown in the deep end a little bit because we'd both never fished for sooties before and only had very limited experience with barramundi so um yeah last year was was an eye-opener um we were <clears throat> super competitive last year um our bags were really, really, really good in comparison to to what the other guys had. But, you know, unfortunately, we, we, we didn't take it away last year. But all I can say about this year is we did much better. So keep your eye out for the, uh, for the, for the rounds this year. Excellent. No worries. Listen, I've got a, got a photo up on the screen there, a um, little bit of a highlight of your career, I believe. Um, you were on Sunrise. Oh, yeah, yeah. For that, I guess one of the promotional things we had um, up in Mackay last year was actually promoting uh, the Australian Fishing Championships um, and uh, promoting the Mackay region, I guess, as well. Um, so, yeah, luckily me and Mitch were both fortunate enough to, to get invited up by Michael Harris, who basically runs AFC. He's a really nice guy and give us give us some pretty cool opportunity but to also do um to do to do the sunrise uh as part of the AFC, yeah it was pretty cool it was, it was good to meet sam and and the sunrise crew pretty cool you uh can you see that message there maddie i can maddie should give a shout out to their airport taxi Who's the airport taxi? I think Tracy's having a bit of a dig at you because you always go down there and stay with Tracy <laughs> and Pauline and uh, she runs you to the airport there, mate. I should also say, too, when when we do go away, me and Mitch have, have uh, camped at Lloyd and Tracy's a couple of times, but I, I, I don't want to call them a taxi service because they're more than just a taxi service. They're good friends of ours. So, um Thanks, Lloyd and Trace and Mia, and I'm sure Mitchell will agree too. Um, thanks for letting us stay at your house and conveniently so close to the airport. <laughs> but, yeah, no, thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Love you. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. So, um, yeah, we've had a few few more questions pop up, and we are covering some of those questions in the um, in the uh, agenda as we go forward. So, um we, we did mention earlier you, you have got a very famous fishing cousin in Carl Jacobson who has um, finally had his first win last year. There he is on the, on the thing over behind you. Um, tell us about this experience. I'm going to put this video up here and um, I want you to, you, you can really talk over it if you wish to. Um, but when you sent this one to me, I was blown away. So um, have, a, have a talk. Welcome to America, Maddie. <laughs> Welcome to Idaho. <laughs> what is that thing? First glide bait fish. Very first glide bait fish. Absolute monster. Let's watch him swim off. Good I wish I could coach. see the video. <laughs> I can't see it. I can see it on my feed now. <clears throat> yeah, do you, um, do you want to tell the guys a little bit about that fish? I'll, um, I'll replay the video. Yep, so that that fish there. Welcome to America, Maddie. Obviously, the cousin, and, and we've, you know, we try and keep in contact as much as we can. Um, he's, he's been a huge influence of mine too. And a, probably a, or him and, him and Chris have both been that sort of 
uh, how would you say, the concrete blocks behind where I'm at at the moment, I guess. But <clears throat> that was at, um, up at Coeur d'Alene in Idaho just before their, uh, Carl and Kayla's wedding last year. And basically he said, oh, I'm going to I'll take you out for a fish. Do you want to do you want to just try and catch some fish, or what do you want to do? And I said, oh well, I wouldn't mind just catching a couple of fish, and then we'll see what 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 the day transpires into. So um, he just basically said to me, all right, I will go and chase some smallies. So I caught caught a couple of good fish on smallies. The bite was really tough. They had a real specific bite period late in the afternoon. So I caught one real nice smallmouth and a couple of small ones, and he said to me. Let's just go. We've got about an hour left. Let's just go and fish a glide bait. Um, so as you know, Carl Carl just loves his glide bait fishing, and he's very good at it too, I might add. Uh, and he can read. He can just read the water incredibly well, um, especially for a guy that's only been over in America for you know less than ten years. He can read those waters over there incredibly well. And he just said, oh, "I've got a little spot. Um, let's just head over, and uh, we'll we'll have a cast and." see how you go and basically we we put this big uh it was one of those big arashi glides and he had a we had a miller rod i think it was a dream freak all rigged up ready to go and he just said just cast that there's basically an old logging fort uh that was in the water and there was heaps of lay down massive logs and stuff and the largemouth get up underneath there and stuff and he just said just keep casting underneath there and there was one set in particular, he just had his eye on, and he said, put all your effort into that zone there. And basically, it was like my fifth cast. I lobbed the glide bait in, and I was just winding it back ever so slowly. And it's 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 a bite that'll just stick in my head forever. I basically was just winding it back, and I stopped on the twitch. And I just saw the line, and I felt everything. I just saw the line just go, Doink! and it was... I just remember, yep, there he is, and I just set the hooks on him, and it was like a, it was like an eight pounder. He reckons it was like an eight pounder, but I think it was probably more of a seven or something. But being a northern fish, where it's real super, like it's normally cold up there, that he reckoned that that was like a, a huge largemouth for up north. But I think the biggest thing was it was a it was a fish on a glide bait, um, and you know everyone sees and. He, he talks about it all the time and it's just pretty cool to actually have him just say, do this in that spot and you'll get a bite. And it happened in six casts. It was cool. So while we're still in America, I know last year I was heading up to the Masters with uh, Benny Farrow. We were driving along. We had the live screen up watching you and all your results. And we were so excited to, to see how well you finished. Tell us. You know, that, that photo there would have to sit in your memory as, as one of the highlights of your fishing career. Tell us a little bit about the States, mate. Um, yeah, I guess the, the whole reason we were there was for two reasons. One was Carl's wedding and basically the other was to fish the, the Bass Nation Championship. So I got Angler of the Year in 2018 through the Bass Nation Series here in Australia. And... Part of that prize was to go and fish this Bass Nation Championship, and it was at Lake Hartwell. Um, <clears throat> and to, to me, the, the experience number one was going to be awesome. Like, we made a big road trip of it and we did everything else. But Carl um, and his sponsors obviously want to thank them too because they, they lent me. Carl basically gave me his life. So he gives me his truck and his boat. That's what he does over there. He just and he gave it to me and said, "Here's here's my kit for the for the for the fortnight. You go and use it and do your best." So I didn't have to cart rods and reels. I didn't have to do all that sort of stuff. But the actual experience itself, I spent three or four days on Lake Hartwell. And to give you a size comparison of Lake Hartwell, think of Somerset times probably times fifty. Probably, probably more than that, 50 times bigger than Somerset. Um, so that's Lake Harwell. It's probably 100 times bigger. I don't know. It's hu- absolutely huge. Um, <clears throat> I remember pre-fishing on the Saturday, there was a 300-boat college tournament on the Saturday, plus there was weekend recreational fishermen, plus there was another 50 boats from the championship all pre-fishing. That Saturday 
I'd never seen so many bass boats on a dam. There was more bass boats on that Saturday's pre-fish than I reckon there's bass boats in Australia. Um, so that was an eye-opener. But um, the, kind of what I picked up with, with, the, with the spotted bass, spotted bass are very – their feeding habits and the way they set up is very similar to Australian bass. They're quite aggressive. Um, I did tons of research. Um, <clears throat> I didn't really – I didn't talk to the guys over there much about it because I kind of wanted to save this opportunity – for myself you know like i wanted to go in and do what i do over here do all the research and, and that and go into that tournament over there <clears throat> on off my own back if that makes sense plus carl had lent me all his stuff too so um <clears throat> i kind of wanted to just go and go and learn what i could in the four days that i had but basically all my research added up they were feeding on blueback herring they responded really well to structure especially offshore structure uh, a lot of the American guys in the first two days that I was there, I noticed they were fishing these huge big points. So I kind of stayed away from these big points and I just finished the, I fished, I, I basically call them micro points. So they're small points of major points or secondary points, you could call them. And I, all I was doing was throwing a, a, a three eight. I had a, a, a Miller Rod one freak with a three eight ball head throwing a four inch um, Tennessee shad uh, Kitech four inch, and all I did was fish these micro points. And most of these points that I fished had brush piles or little snag piles on them. And nearly every single one of those small little micro points had fish on them. All the all the American guys were fishing these big points. I was fishing these small ones. And every single day in the tour, the tournament started. I was in tenth place after first day. Second day, I think I was equal third. And then on the on the last day, all I needed was two decent bites, and it might, might have got me into that top three. You know, the top three made the Bassmaster Classic. Um, but I made that. You know, the top that I made Championship Sunday. Um, I figured it all out by myself, and, and I just was was so satisfied after it. Um, and just the one big thing that stood out to me over there was the the home support, like. The, the amount, the sheer amount of messages, like I couldn't get through, at the end of the day, I didn't have enough time to go through all my messages because there were so many people from back home messaging and commenting and making sure that they were following along. And even now, um, people, you know, if I take them out on charter, they go, oh, we're watching you in America. And that's one tournament. Um, so, yeah, I, I really want to make sure I get back there and you can really see what, what Carl's been doing over there. It's a credit to him um, as well, you know. So, um, yeah, it was a, one of the best experiences of my life, to put it short. Excellent. Look, we've got another question. We might come across the questions. Keep them coming in, guys, because, um, you know, we, we prefer to be answering your questions. You've got a... A guru of the sport on here, on live, willing to answer your questions. They might be the questions that you don't um, or you're too embarrassed to ask. Just whack them up and um, we'll put them out. But I've uh, got another one here from uh, Dion. Um, now, Dion has actually um, directed to you, Matty. Does that come up on your end? Um, how good. Fishing Baramba and Barker's Creek is with regards to the, what did he say? With regards to the questions about fishing outside dams, he's basically saying you forgot to mention Baramba and Barker's Creek. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He's he's right too. Yeah. Um. Um. Going back to that question about fishing rivers before Dion. Dion's kind of in the same shoes that I'm. I, I was in. You know, young guy loves his fishing. Um. And basically fishing Barker's Creek and Baramba Creek. When I first moved to the South Burnett, I only had a little tinny that I didn't use much. I didn't know much about the dams. And I I walked Barker's Creek and Baramba Creek nearly every day. Um, Taken, you know, took top waters. I, learned, I, I just know, I don't know if it's the same now, I haven't fished them for a while, but when I was fishing them, I felt like I knew them like the back of my hand. Like I, I, I knew... What baits to throw in summertime, what baits to throw in wintertime, um, the size of the fish, all that sort of stuff. So he's right. Barker's, Barker's Creek and Baramba Creek in the South Burnett are some of the best fishing um, 
you know, that, that I've come across, especially for bass and yellows. So he's right, spot on. Dion, Dion. Excellent. Dion, um, I'm gonna um, I'm gonna draw you a prize, mate. So um, you contact me on uh, Corey's Dam Fishing, send me a PM with your address, and I'll send you out a prize. We'll grab it out of the Mercury box. Dion can fish too. Can fish. Dion can fish. So well, we can see that, Dion. You get the uh, brand new Minkota hat. So you, um, you'll, I'll even throw in a, a packet of jig heads to the dams for you. Um, make sure you send me a message on Facebook, and I will get that out to you in the next week or so. Um, just remember, with coronavirus, we've got to um, it'll be a little time before I get down to the actual um, post office, so to speak. <laughs> Cool. All right. So I'm going to hide that question and go on to the next question from the stream. Um, oh, here's one from Will Turner. As I said, without the um, without the cam, I've got the computer a little bit far away from me. I'm just going to wait for it to load. Will has said, I know sanding is key to finding fish in the big dams like Wyvernhoe and Somerset. Where do you start the different seasons? Awesome question, Will. Um, Matty, go for it. You're the, you're the gun on the, on the electronic. It's a good, good question. Um, I, I guess the, the biggest thing with this is tech, technology is like the number one thing that you need when you're fishing any dam because it's going to give away little secrets um generally the rule of thumb with queensland dams is the the cooler the water the shallower the fish generally are and the the warmer the water generally the deeper you can find them so um so normally if the water's freezing cold or if it's real cold i'd look i'd start looking pretty shallow um Bass also, uh, if they're not right up on the edge, they're basically going to be, you know, out to as deep as 20 feet. They'll still get out on those flats and they'll school. Um, but summertime, I kind of more focus around points, uh, deep water adjacent to, 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 to a bit of structure. Um, because generally in summertime, that, that water's hot and they're suspended in the thermocline. So... Yeah, so normally that to answer your question simply was, yeah, wintertime shallow, summertime deep, look for them suspended in summertime and then look for them shallow in wintertime. Um, and the single most important thing when you're fishing impoundments uh, is your sounders because in saying what I just said, there's, there's also dam characteristics as well. So every single dam's different. Um, in the past, Somerset has been unique to, you know, similar to most dams, but now, like, I haven't, I haven't seen a good edge bite at Somerset for years. Um, I mean, it's still there, but the root, like what I just said about the general rule of thumb about going shallow in, in winter, um, some dams it kind of doesn't apply to um, purely because those fish are so honed on sitting on ledges and drop-offs, that sort of thing. So, yeah, it just depends where you are, I guess. But the dams with more structure, that's what I'd stick to, for sure. Great question, which leads us into uh, the next question as well. Will, um, you've actually, uh, and with another great pressure, uh, question, won a prize. So I'll dig back, dig back into the Mercury box and uh, see what I can find in here. You got a uh, my fishing place fishing bus, uh, Minn Kota stubby cooler, and a packet of jig heads. Will so if you can send me um, your details and a Facebook message to Corey's Dam Fishing, 
I will give that prize to you. That's an awesome, uh, awesome question again, which leads us into the next question from Daniel, and it's a Garmin question. So um, what I'll do, Matty, is I'll get you to start answering this, and we do have a couple of Garmin videos loaded um, to play because we knew this question would come up. So um, I'll just bring the question up for you, and then, um, then you can start to answer that one. So um, basically Daniel's um, wondering if you'd use perspective view very often or and how much you'd use it, what depth variations you've used it with. Can you answer that one for Daniel? Um, simple answer is I don't have perspective yet. Um, I've got it I've got it on my um, unit, so I've done the update, but I'm basically waiting for the bracket to come. There were a few pre-production brackets that came out that were given to certain anglers. Um, but I could I could easily make one, but I just want I want a Garmin mount. Um, simple as that. So I'm just waiting for one to come in. Um, from what I've seen, uh, that perspective looks awesome, but I really can't answer that question in depth purely because I haven't used perspective at all at the, at, at the moment. So um, there's a few guys that have got it, so they're they're going to be putting out the videos and that sort of stuff, but. Um, yeah, when it does come out, be sure I'll put some real good stuff up. So, um, yeah, good question, though. Awesome question. Good question. Which leads us in. You are um, you are a Garmin sponsored angler, and Garmin was going to be our product review of the night because you are the the resident Garmin guru. Um, so yeah, what, basically we've got a couple of videos here. I was super impressed with these, um, especially with you in the water. So um, what I'm going to do here is I'll just play that video. And um, it'll actually show you swimming in front of the screen of the um, when you first got your Garmin. So um, this is it here. Garmin life scope. It doesn't miss too much. Yeah, good. So that, that video in itself impressed me so much when I seen you bump that on. But I can remember I was still living in Queensland at the time when you first got your Garmin's set up on the boat and you asked me to um, to come out for a bit of a fish and we were using the Garmin's and, and you, went, you went down to tie on. So I got up and had a little bit of fiddle on the front of the boat and I was watching, the, I was watching it and actually casting a, a soft plastic out in about 50 water like we would with a spoon, and I was counting it down, um, only a two or three count, and bringing it back at about five feet high, and I watched these bass come from 50 feet deep to five feet to have a look at this lure, and it changed my fishing forever. If a, if a bass can sense a jig head with a curly tail grub on it from 50 feet away, and we're worried about vision and rattles and everything else, um, you know, it was mind blowing to see those fish coming from such a long distance away. Mm. Yeah, <clears throat> that um, just just the whole the whole idea behind LiveScope. Um, I, I know the first two weeks that I had it, and I I spend a lot of time on charter watching my screen. So. In an eight-hour day, I might watch those screens for two hours non-stop, you know. So, um, <clears throat> pro probably more than that. But anyway, but the the amount of fish, the, the amount I've learned in pure fish behaviour in the last three years just by using pan optics and then live scope, I've learned so much just about the way they react. So, um, <clears throat> the the cool thing is. You can watch fish that are just free swimming. So they're out in front of the boat. You can watch them around structure. You can watch them how they react around bait. Um, you can, <clears throat> the one thing that's been really interesting is you can watch their reaction to lures. You can watch what they do. So um, like what you were saying before, like you had a, I think it was a curl tail grub or something. Yeah, like yeah, just yeah, just a Berkeley gulp. Yeah, yeah. Like to to us, that wouldn't create much disturbance in the water, but there was fish 
coming up from 30 feet to look at it. You know, that, that they must have incredible sense of their, their lateral lines just must be able to pick up the most incredible amount of smallest amount of vibration. You imagine what a like a chatterbait or a spinnerbait's thrown out, you know, like um, <clears throat> just incredible. But yes, it's just the, the way that fish react. Like, I, there's some days where I can spend, you know, 10 minutes just by watching what the clients are throwing and just know no, they're not going to eat that. I'll put a spoon on or I'll put a plastic on or we'll throw, you know, we'll throw a, we'll go and throw edges or something like that. I can, I can now just by reading that sound, just by looking at the sound and know almost instantaneous just by the way fish are reacting on the sounder. Because normally all you're doing is, is you're looking at, um, you know, you're looking at lines on your screen, you know, your traditional or your, or your, clear view or whatever it is but with live scope you're seeing in real time how they're acting at that very second um and it just yeah it, without seeing it you don't understand it um but yeah but we do we do have a little bit of a video here maddie that i'll uh, that i will play um and it's got you explaining a little bit about how they're um how they're moving around oh yeah, yeah. Right, so Barumba we're at Barumba one. here, and you can see on the left-hand side of the screen, there's a big pot of bonies, just under the eight o'clock, just there. We've got a number of trees. The fish to the right of the screen are low on the snags, but the ones over here to the left, they're actually in amongst the bonies having a good old feed, and we've been catching them pretty good. But this pan optics is insane. You, you, you're f watching bass free swim and free feed. Look at these two eating bonies just there. There he goes. They, they've had enough. They're two big bass, those two. This is next level. Holy dooly. As you said there, this is next level. It really, really is. Garmin have, have really jumped the game here with this, this whole live thing. And... Um, as I said, it's taught me I can't afford to change over yet. So, um, you know, it's I have to go out in your boat to enjoy it. But it, it just changed the whole way I thought about fishing. So um, you know, those guys that do have it uh, are really now getting that advantage. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And just like I said, just by pure, but just purely by watching it now, I can I can just pick things up so quickly. Because you're just seeing it in real time. That that video I just showed, or you just showed us there that I sent to you earlier. They were big bass. They were huge bass, and they were just cruising around in the timber at Barumba feeding on bait. Some some didn't care about the bait. Some were just hanging around trees, um, and it oh it just blew my mind. Like that was in the first couple of weeks that I had it. It was just incredible. Yeah, look, and to say that that how much it has changed the game you know we all love to get on and, and follow what's happening in the us on the on the bass scene and and whatnot but um there is um i did see i can't remember which angler was this year that has gone without sponsorship he's decided to fund himself um because he wants to to use the best of everything so garmin with that live just leaves everything for dead he's got lawrence on there for um for his down scan and standard sonar, and then he's put a, a 360 unit, which I've seen some massive um, cool photos and that Chris Hickson's been putting up. So he's run with all three sounders on his unit, this on his boat this year, because he wants the best of each. You know, everything has its own little um, bonuses and, and negatives, but if you're looking at a fish finder, go onto the Garmin website, check it out. If you have any questions, flick them through to to Matthew Langton's fishing page. I'm sure he'll answer those for you, um, you know, and if you really want to learn them, book him for a charter. You know, the, he does charter. Obviously, we're, we're locked in at the moment, but, you know, if you want to learn something about it, jump on his boat, learn the finders, learn how to fish, see what they're about, and then you can go out and purchase them. I, I think that's just a great deal. For a mm. big investment like that, you know, a lot of us are running two or three finders on the boat, uh, for a big investment, you're going to be spending thousands upon thousands of dollars. Why not spend a few hundred dollars and, and go out with Maddie on a charter, a 
and learn about how these sounders really do work and how he's got them set up because he has got them set up pretty prime. Mm. Just talking about that guy over in America, I know there's an Aussie angler, Ricky Doyle's got, I think, the same setup. <laughs> I'm pretty Ricky, sure. Ricky's asked about 400 questions here, and I'm, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not trying to ignore you, Ricky, but I've just been getting a few better ones. So um, <laughs> there was one here from Big Sump, actually. Uh, it's another good question. Um, Big Sump's asked, um, who was your biggest help coming through the Kubota ranks? Oh, man. Good good question. Um I can name a few guys who, who I learn a lot from. Um, I know Peter Phelps is probably a big one. Um, uh, but I, I guess the, the other thing too, before I go rattling off too many names, um, like I said, Phelpsy was a big one because he, he brought things into perspective for me. So there was one particular day on Somerset, where he was catching fish on this curl tail um, and I started doing the same thing. He looked at me and he said, what are you doing? And I said, I'm changing to a curl tail. He said, what have you been catching them on all weekend? And I said, oh, it was a red belly black mass vibe. And, he, and, and I said that to him. He said, what position are you coming? And I was coming first. And he says, why are you changing? And that was a big, that was a big thing for me. I, I just remember going... It was like getting smacked in the face by words, you know. He's just like slapped me in the face with words and said, what are you doing? Um, and, yeah, I kept doing what I was doing and I won. And without, if he didn't tell me that, I would have probably done something silly and tried to do something that he was doing. Um, but there, there, was, there was, I guess, uh, being, being a, a co-angler, I, I think the biggest piece of advice is – know who you're up against um, and know who you're fishing with. So I know, and this, 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 not a lot of people know this, I study every single thing that other anglers do. So um, they put stuff up on their fishing pages. They, they, you know, I'm an active follower as well. Like I, I'll, you know, I like a lot of fishing pages and a lot of guys fishing, but I also know how they fish, what their strengths are, like not, I don't know everything, but I, it's part of your research, like you study your opponents, I guess. Um, so that was a big thing when I was, when I was a co-angler as I knew um, who my pros were and that sort of thing. But there, there was a heap of guys, that one with Phelps, he was a big one. Mitch Cohn was another one, you know, guys like um, Steve Kanowski. I know, I've never actually fished with Steve, but you know, an active follower of his fishing exploits for years and years and still am now. Uh, I've got a huge amount of respect for, for the, for the you know, the older anglers that have been around for a, for a long time, like Dave Green, um, Jason Ehrlich, um, Harry Watson, Moddy even, you know, there's so many guys that I respect because of their angling ability and um, because you've watched them for years. Um, Carl was was you know one of the best of all time when it came to AFC so um yeah I guess all accumulated all together and then having all this knowledge of what you've watched on AFC then fishing with a few of the pros um I guess a culmination of everything put together and going into a co-angler comp um yeah so there's no there's not one single answer sorry Jono but it's just I guess being an active follower of, of anglers that have been fishing for a long time and then putting it into practice and actually sitting on the backs of their boats, I guess, is the biggest thing. So there's not one single guy, but yeah, I, I do remember that thing with Phelps years ago, really smacked me in the nose with a with his words was a good one. Yeah, and, I, and look, I think that goes back onto Nikki's question earlier on. Um, you know, if you, you've just got to get out there and do it and learn off these. And you're a bunch yourself and Coney and Phelpsy and Chris Hickson and all these guys that are out there that are absolute, you know, they're the modern superstars of the game, is all are. And and if you can get as a co-boater and, and, you know, I always say to people, you, you can't put a price on knowledge. You've gone out and spent 20 years learning that and yeah. you've got to pay a couple of hundred bucks entry to enter a comp and you're going to get, you know, 
experience that you can't do in 10 years of fishing. So, you know, um, jump on board and become a co-boater and, and learn. It's all about learning. Social media has changed the game. It said I spend a lot of time YouTubing and following people's Facebook pages to see what they're doing, watching what they're throwing, seeing what techniques they're doing. It's all about studying and, and research and you know, you don't even have to have been there now to, to, to learn about a place because of social media. Yeah, yeah. And I, I guess the Dane, the, the, the other thing is to to, to mould your game, you've got to know or you've got to basically decide what you want to add to your game or your repertoire and what to leave behind and just ignore. So um, the only... Um, the only thing that, yeah, that, that really, uh, I lost my train of thought there. Um, but yeah, That's the, right. That's the, right. The big, yeah, the big, the biggest thing is just making sure that you choose the right information and the right knowledge to store as part of your own, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, because yeah, there's so much, like I said earlier, you can learn tons of really good stuff being a co-angler. You can learn tons of bad stuff as a co-angler but you've got to try and have that common sense and knowledge to know right i'm going to take that away with me and then i'm going to leave that there and i'll i'll add this to my game and i'll leave that you know like um yeah it, it, there's there's a lot to take in but you've just got to pull it apart and take what take the good things away from it yeah now look i finally got a question i can put up from rick so um <laughs> rick, i'll um I'll throw you a question up here because it is actually a good one and I will give you a prize for this one, but the, the deal with the um, the prize is, mate, you're just going to have to come around and collect it um, and uh, have a beer with me, but you'll have to wait until lockdown's finished. So I'll just keep it here with the, with the cold beer. So, um, yeah, Rick said, who rattles you the most knowing you have to go up against them? That's a good question. But it's an easy answer. Can I be very blunt? Oh yeah, definitely. and I don't want to. I don't want to sound cocky by saying this either. But no one. Um. The the simplest thing is, the the way I fish or the way you go into fishing is you're not, you. To the way that I think, this is the way I think. You you're not fishing against someone. Um, you're fishing against the fish. So. Um, you, you gotta, you gotta know. Don't get me wrong. You gotta know your opponents. You gotta know who you're up against, obviously. Um, but there's not. I can't think. I can't really think of anyone who has rattled me like, oh, sh you know, shivers. I'm, I'm up against such and such. Um, I get nervous sometimes in comps, or I used to get nervous in comps, and now I don't. But the, I guess I think the biggest thing is for me. All I'm worried about is making sure that I go out and I catch, um, I catch my fish. Um, there was a there was a comp a couple of weeks ago, and I someone made a comment to me about, um, oh, you know, you didn't catch really big fish, and I, I simply said, just make sure I'm just going to make sure I've got six on Sunday. And luck had it that I had six on Sunday, and I came second. Um, and the same with the, the ABT the other week, it was all about making sure five, catching five fish is hard to do. Um, and just making sure that you catch that amount of fish, you just have to make sure that you catch your limit of two, five, four, whatever it is. Um, just make sure you catch them because then you're going to be competitive and then whoever you're up against is then under pressure. So yeah, there's not there's not a single angler that I that I'm intimidated by or scared of, because I don't I don't see it as me versus you. It's it's me versus trying to get those two fish in that session in the bag, and then the next session it's me versus catching those two fish, and then the third session is me catching those two fish. Does that does that make sense? Oh, definitely. Look, I. You know, and that's the insights that I was hoping people would be able to pry out of you. Um, you know, we, we get to chat about them all of the time, but, um, you know, I was hoping these questions would come through where we could um, 
you know, the lead-in was a bit long and we raced you a little bit and whatnot. I really wanted people to pick your brains and, and learn a few of these little things. You know, you're, you're a big confidence fisherman and, and it's all about confidence. But, uh, Ricky, um, you actually got... Cod Nationals uh, singlet from uh, last year. So, sorry, Cod Classic. So, um, <laughs> nice. That's, that's what you drew out of the drew out of the prize bag. Now, um, listen, we I'm not going to cut it off yet. We've still got a few viewers on, but everyone's going to start to drop off very soon. It's getting quite late. Mm -hmm. I just want to um, I'll take the time to introduce next week's guest. Um, just so we can, and as I said, it won't be as much of a roast next week, so to speak, because um, this guy is another very, very knowledgeable man when it comes to fishing, uh, fishing rider, um, Cod Nationals winner, um, so much on his resume when it comes to fishing and a bit of a Cod guru. So um, if, you're, if you're into your Cod, share it around, get on again next week. We're going to have... Um, my second guest for, for next week, obviously, is going to be Mr. Stephen Booth. So, um, you know, if anyone's read um, the magazine, Stephen writes, he works for Wilson's, and he does know how to catch cod. Uh, being, you know, several TV shows, he is, a, you know, the man when it comes to cod. Hopefully, he'll be able to lead us into some, um, some new product or something coming from Wilson. So um, let's see if we can try and sneak a little bit of a... Um, a sly out of him and get some information that nobody's heard about yet next week. So um, I'll int introduce him now so everyone knows who we've got on next week before we drop off. Oh, Matty, you had something? He top 10 the Nationals this year too, didn't he? Oh, yeah, he's, he's won it. He's won Freshwater Masters. Um, the guy's a, guy's a bit of a guru. So, um, nice. yeah. I've already got um, got a lot of details from Stephen and um, well Boothy, and realistically, he knows his stuff. And next week, hopefully, you know, guys can get on and ask Boothy the the, the hard questions, so to speak. Now we've got a you know a couple of um, yeah, couple of what? Uh, another question. This one's uh. So he is from Sean Swain, I think it is. And Sean's asked, I heard a lot of the boys are using straight through fluoro. What are the advantages and when do you use it? Oh, that's a good question. Um, there's, I guess, in, a, in America, I've used it a fair bit over there. Um, you've got, I guess you've got, mon you got mono, fluorocarbon and braid is probably your three biggest ones. But mono is obviously too short stretchy or too elastic but fluorocarbon has less stress than mono as far as i'm aware i hope i'm getting this right because i'm not a huge user of fluoro myself but um i know mick mick also fishes a lot of fluoro with his jigs and that sort of stuff i, I think the biggest thing with fluoro is you obviously have um you have a little bit more elasticity in the line so you've got you, you got a chance to wind down. You've got a chance to set the hooks. Now, with using braid, because it's so direct, sometimes you can strike too hard and you can actually rip the fish. Uh, you can rip a hole in the fish's mouth or in the, in the side of his mouth and, and more chance of that lure coming out. With fluorocarbon, you can, um, you can get a better hook set in certain circumstances. But... Um, yeah, I guess, I guess the biggest thing is just trial and error. Um, try it. Try using fluorocarbon. Howdy. Um, hey. Yeah, we um, for for that side of things, I, I know Manny Farrow down here at uh, Blue Rock and and, and oh, of course, Glenn yeah. Maggie and stuff like that. He's a, a big believer in it. And I was braid, 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 braid until we went up to the Freshwater Masters last year and we're yeah. fishing jigs at Glenbourne and. We actually found that with the um, with the straight through, you could actually detect the bites better um, when the fish picked the jig up and swam towards you, because the the braid the, the loop in the line um, moved quicker with the braid. It cut through the water and you didn't quite see. So when those fish were swimming with the jig in their mouth, Ben was just being able to nail them, and I wasn't feeling the bite until the fish was 
basically under the boat, um, <laughs> which which really really changed my thought process of, of you know pulling one up and actually trying it because it was a it was a three to one hookup ratio at Glenbourne. Um, it was amazing difference. Mm-hmm. That, that was an awesome question, Sean. So. Uh, I'll draw a, the last prize uh, for the questions tonight out for you, um, Sean. So please send me through your address through to Corey's Dam Fishing page and I will get you a prize out of the Mercury box. <laughs> so you actually have got a Lawrence hat and a Minn Kota buff there, mate. So that was a great question awesome. again. Nice. Thank you very much. Now, on on prizes and everything else for everyone that's, um, I suppose, on here watching tonight, you might know somebody. Look, I'm quite happy to accept any um, any prizes to give away on the show and give your give your stuff a bit of a plug. If you're a small lure maker uh, or a large lure maker, and you just want us to mention your product as a giveaway. 100% what you give me, I will give away. So um, I'm not interested in, in any of this stuff coming into um, into my back pocket. If anyone's interested in sending some product through to us, get in touch with me through the Corey's Dam Fishing page. And, yeah, I can review your product. I'll give you a product and honest review. Just because you're giving it to me, I won't do anything different. And um, if, you, if you're willing to send some prizes through, uh, I will definitely give them out each week on the, on the show as we go forward, um, you know, and, and we'll see how we go um, because it's going to cost me a fortune by the end of the year. I might not. <laughs> not skimping on the prizes, put it that way. Thanks for your question, Sean. Let's go down. I'll just see if we've got any more questions. They've been good questions so far. There have been some great questions. Now this this is a long question, so uh, and it's a bit of a bit of a laugh. So um, I will put this one in. Okay. So this one's from good mate Lane. Oh yeah. Lane said, "Would you rather face an over from Brett Lee, run straight at Steve Matai?" Oh. Or try and ride Red Rock for eight seconds in his prime. God. I'm staying away from three because that's just madness. Um, Steve Maddow would just... I wonder if he means like now or in the prime. <laughs> no, we'll, we'll say in his prime. Um, no. Nah. Steve Maddow, I'm staying away from him. I've seen oh, – so he just rips people in half. I'm going to go with Brett Lee. Brett Lee is a tall lane, so uh, yeah, with, your, with your cricket <laughs> – Red Rock. Mick Johnson said he'd get on Red Rock. So, uh, Would he? <laughs> he's a, a old bull rider from way back. Thanks for the question, Lane. Uh, he would have ridden some rough ones in his day. Yeah, too. yeah. Lane, look, if anyone's um, – <laughs> Anyone's out there and they want to learn about editing and stuff like that, Lane's actually got his own media page uh, up and running. He's doing some great stuff for Matty. Um, yeah, so don't yeah. forget to, um, you know, if you need any media done, get a hold of Lane Furling on Facebook. Mad Lane Media, he's, can, he does a good job, real good job. And if you haven't watched yet, um, I love his um, GT Buster videos that, um, that he did when he went up the top end. <laughs> They were the bomb. That was yeah. some really, really good footage in those. Well done, mate. Uh, let's look. Paddy Chainsaw was better. <laughs> oh, look, they're coming through. There the we go. There we go. <laughs> so, look, guys, we've been on for about an hour and a half. As I said, probably um, half hour roasting Matty uh, a little bit more than what I would for, for future guests. But I um, <laughs> hope you enjoyed the um, – the format, if you have any any things and you want to put through, whack and through on my Facebook page, give us some likes, uh, follow us every Monday night at 9 o'clock. I believe Daylight Savings finishes um, this week, so we'll be on the same time frames anyway and I won't have to stuff that up. Um, I'd like to welcome you back anytime you want to come back as a, as a co-host, Maddie. 
um, Thanks, for mate. jumping on. Um, it's really been fun having you here. I do appreciate everything you've done for me and, and even jumping on this video from the first go. Um, you are a great mate and, um, you know, I've... I've lived in your shadow for long enough. I am going to start kicking your ass. That's, um, that's purely and simply how it's going to go from <laughs> now on. Um, Thanks, think of everyone saying, why don't you do what Matty does? So, uh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, no, thanks, that. guys. Uh, Matty, have you got anything else you um, you want to say? I think everyone's um, uh, – the questions are all up. No, I think, I think the biggest thing is if, if anyone does have any questions for – myself or you um just send us a message on our pages but um i want to i want to say i want to say thanks to you captain because i am the guinea pig as one would say with this yes you are so mate there i found myself at stages of this still laughing at the opening to this there's you standing there you sitting there naked and then the other cool little touch was harry Counting down. Um, yeah. Thing at the start. No, Harry, Harry's been awesome and he's helped out heaps with, uh, with setting up the little studio. Um, you know, it, it has been good fun. I was very, very nervous. Um, <laughs> you know, we got on five minutes before to make sure everything was working and um, I had to run out and have a nervous shit, believe me, him <laughs> by himself. Um, yeah, it's very hard to uh, put yourself out there in the environment. I know everyone's in lockdown and we've got to stay at home and I've been staring at the boat, I've been fishing in the swimming pool, I'm going dead set, batshit crazy, and I thought, what could I do to, um, you know, get some like-minded fishermen on the line and to do a live stream like this I think is just something that we can continue on even after we're back and fishing. I can set this up. We can do this on the road. Uh, we can we can do interviews during fishing comps and whatnot. So um, yeah. thanks everyone for jumping on. Thanks everyone for sharing and liking the page. Jump on to Corey's Dam Fishing and um, you know like my page for future posts. Jump on to Matthew Langford Fishing. Don't forget, uh, Maddie runs a charter business. Jump on there and learn from the best I did, and it helped me no end. So um, you know, jump on, do all those. I can't think of who else we've got mentioned. Um, in the in the grand scheme of things, Matty, I think um, we're getting some great comments, and um, you know, it, back, mate. yeah, it's really appreciated, guys. And hopefully, I can get better. As I'm self-taught, dyslexic, um, you know, any problems you've had, I've got it, and uh, I've been able to get this up and running. So if I can do it, you know, anyone can do it. If you do want to come on the show, and uh, even if it's only a a guest speaker spot where you where you pop in and answer a couple of questions when somebody else is on there. We can do that. The um, the app is is up and working now, so I've got the format done. Um, as I said, Stephen Booth next week. Can't wait to get him on and, and pick his brains because I, I really want to beat him at the Masters <laughs> and Nationals again. So I will be trying to pry out as much information as I can out of Boothie. I know that we've got... Um, We've got a little bit of interest in, uh, from in the US. There's a couple of people from the US that might be interested in in coming on board as well for a bit of a chat. So things can only go up from here. If you want to get on and have a chat or if you want to be on the show, send me a message, like my page, like my guest pages, Maddie's pages. I think you're currently got just the two running, Maddie. What's that, mate? You've got two pages running at the moment. You've got your charters page. What's that yeah, one? Yeah, I've got Australian Freshwater Fishing Charters and Matt Langford Australian Fishing, yeah. Yeah, so jump on and like both of those pages. Thank you very much, Matty, for uh, all of your input tonight. I know it was a bit, little bit of a roast uh, early on in the piece. <laughs> um, look, great. and to be 100% honest, I've probably got another half an hour of video footage here um, of roasting, but I, I sort of left that out. Um <laughs> So yeah, I, keep an eye out for the intros. I'm going to try and do a um, do a smart intro every week, uh, a bit like the Simpsons. A little bit of a change up in the intro every week. Um, if you have ideas for the intro, send them through as well. There is no question that you shouldn't ask um, on on a fishing page like this. Just get out there, ask those questions, and we'll try and answer them. Um, thanks everyone for watching. 
we're going to uh, we're going to jump off now, and um, I shall just put up. I even made an ending up. This is um, <laughs> embarrassing. So um, thanks, Maddie. Um, I'll just just stay in the line for me, Maddie. I'll talk to you after we go offline. Um, thanks everyone for watching. It has been absolutely awesome. Thanks for all the feedback, any input, just send it. Oh, and I watched another thing on Facebook the other day. We we're not allowed to give high fives and anything else, so we're going to go back to the David Hasselhoff era and do the pistol finger. So, out for now.